The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too Welcome to my brother, my brother, and me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. I'm your sweet baby brother, Griffin McElroy, and this one's going right over the plate. Right, isn't it? Like, right over the oh, middle like of the plate. Oh, like it's a perfect strike? If this one's going to be a perfect strike. Well, no, because even that sounds like it'll, it takes on a lot of effort. Oh. This one's this one is, um, this one's going to be by the books, huh? Oh, okay. Second, ba- second base. This one's going to get you to second base. This is a ground rule double. I don't know what that means. A lot of people are like 499. That's, ooh, there must be ramping up. And it's like, nah, we're not evil Knievel. You know what I mean? We don't need an an approach game. This one's going to be right over the plate. And then the next one's going to be fucking wild. We're walking this bat. This is the batter where it's just like. This batter's going to walk. We're going to walk this one because we know the next one's an easy out. But Fucking. this one, oh, this is the this is the big slugger who scares us because earlier in the season he got that grand slam off of us to lose the big game, and now we're a little nervous around him, so we might walk him. But what's that? Oh, Travis is coming in here, and he's not ready to walk him. He's got he's got blood in his eyes. You know, he's gonna he might kill this batter. This I guarantee is- you will finish this episode of the podcast and say out loud, "Fine." Yeah. <laughs> that That's was an, an they, they recorded audio into microphones for an hour. And then no, I anybody can do that. I'm saying, I don't want it to say it's going to be bad. Okay. It's going to be fine. Yeah. It's going mean, to be an episode. Be fine. It's not, ju- juice, juice. It might be great, but I'll tell you this much. It's going to be a lot like the other episodes. Yeah. <laughs> this one's going to get, this is the big, the big unit that Travis's analogy was perfect. It's going to, this episode's Mark McGuire. We're gonna pat. We're gonna pass on him. We're gonna you let know, him go on to first, so he doesn't do a lot of real damage before fucking Big Poppy gets up here on five hundred and slams one. This is the thing. Is like no matter how well we did on this, this might end up being our greatest episode yet. But I yeah. think it would be rare to find somebody who would look at five hundred episodes, like the five hundredth episode, even, and say, "Oh yeah, but the most special one was four ninety nine. No, that's not. I just that's, think I, that's weird. Here's a, Here's what I'd say. Here's what I'd say. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Four hundred ninety-eight perfect episodes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Certainly, certainly, dear listeners, I think you would agree. We've earned one. Right. For no, us. I can't. Not bad. That. Just for us. It's just. It's go listen to episode. I'm gonna just uh, three hundred and sixty-one. This one's gonna be like that. I just bought, assuming it's on a live show or whatever the fuck. Like this one's gonna be like episode one hundred and twenty-seven, right? It's just gonna be a fucking episode. Picture, p- close your eyes and picture your platonic ideal of one. My brother, my brother, me episode. It's the, this is gonna be it. This is the Venn diagram of normal episodes, and this one is going to be one circle. We're gonna do yahoos. We're gonna have fun, but like, don't expect us. To set some shit up. No. This is not the Rosetta Stone. You but, need to uh, understand episode 500. This one's Mark McGuire, MLB former home run record holder. But now, don't Griffin, lower you your it. expectations either. No. No, it's no. going to be fine. It could be good. <laughs> Griffin, you randomly pulled 361. And I think that this episode, I would like to do this a few times. Yeah. I'm going to just click out a random number generator. Sure. And return to some great episodes. I don't want to play clips from them. Yeah. Uh-huh. I just like to. S- so in 361. Yeah. See if any any of this. Okay. Hashtag Mambo number five. Nope. Nipple nipple shrapnel. No. Nope. A frequency situation. Nope. Uh, Fondue rules. That no. rings something of a bell. Navy beans, frials, and nasier. <laughs> it sounds like one. Of the oh wait. Okay. About. Frials that and nasier. That sounds like when we talked about Fraser in that <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah. That's one gotta many. be. Yeah. Uh, hey, but we don't normally reminisce on this show. This one's got to be by the books, Juice. 
So. Well, I, no, I want it to be by the books. Yeah, we've like never made a callback book. before, Griffin. Never I just successfully. No, 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 not. See, a callback implies that we're just recycling bits. Uh-huh. I want to just return to the randomly selected episode 141, Dan the Man with the Flan Plan. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> I know that one. Fun to say. Uh, February 2013, uh, so young, favorite Oscars. Squatting. Mm. Okay. I butt. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> what a fruitful period. Big city living. Okay. Dan sexual. Now no that idea. one I remember. How rich. Uh, what a rich tapestry a we rich were weaving. That was. Did you say did you say I butt? I <laughs> was that lowercase I big B butt like it was from Apple? Lord Just almighty, a, that's good. An I butt is one. Is one that was in here. That's okay. a very powerful. That's a powerful turn of phrase. Uh, what What might be a fun game is what is the most recent episode that I can't remember a fucking lick of a thing about? Because I bet it's pretty. I bet it's shockingly recent. Yeah. Yeah. Four sixty six. Just pulled that out of my butt. That would have been oh. twenty three episodes ago, right? We'll 33. think of journey back to four sixty six, Griffin. That was the food train. Okay, I remember Food Train. Okay. Okay. We're good. We're good. So 466. Food Train was clear. smart, actually. Food Train, food was, train was a smart, wasn't... good idea. But let's go to 439. 439, I bet you know I, it's a completely different three boys hosted that show. <laughs> okay, 439. Yeah. Well, that was that was Candlelight's 2018. So oh, you okay. definitely do remember okay. that. The memories are there. The memories. Are there. So then you probably sandwich around like, oh, but the, this year's number, blah, 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 which is an excuse for us not to do our usual jokes. 437 to yes. take it back to before that. A silent chug. Huh. That's business paintball, wishbone brutality, big candies. Ooh. The fast food arms race, serious Z- Zapdos, and horny radio Disney. It horny just, radio Disney, it, I remember. Okay, I got I got I got I locked that in. Is this fun for anybody other than us? Probably not. It's barely fun for me. Yeah. I work for a food delivery service. Congratulations. We can all agree this is a classic start. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is right down the hill. And I tried to follow it up to you by doing the thing where I pretend like, even though I know Justin's reading a question, like it's that Justin is saying that thing about himself. Yeah. Yeah. Classic. That's classic. 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 I'm going to miss these bits in the new era. Yeah, right. Of five. (laughs) In the in the light of five hundred, when things change so dramatically that it's scarcely recognizable as a podcast, that's when I'm going to yeah. stop phoning it in. Five hundred is our goop. This is what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> really? I, listen, I want to get back to this question for sure, for sure, for sure, yeah, for sure, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Although I bet that when I started with, I work for a food delivery service. There were probably at least seventy five people listening. They're like, "Yes, they did mine." I All thought right, you were going to say go. seventy five percent, and I was going to agree. That number might also be accurate. Um, I would, yeah, anyway, uh, 500 is our goop. And what I'm saying is we're going to transition from pure comedy to more lifestyle brand. I like that. That's where the money is, is a lifestyle brand. Yep. Uh, and then we can, I've got my new bit called exfoliation station. Um, everybody's been clamoring for me to have my own segment. So I'm going to be talking about all kinds of crystalline rubs. I'm going to be talking about peels. I'm going to be talking about acids. Abrasive, acidic, just but your skin is either going to look great or be gone. Be completely now your bones. And even that, maybe we can talk about that. Yeah, how to how to beautify your bones. Everyone's focused on such surface level stuff. I'm talking about like what's inside that counts, which make is you, how pretty make, are your bones? Make those fucking sinews pop. Let's yes. talk about the deep tissue. That in skin bedazzling. I'm going to do a new segment called What Not to Wear, and it's W-H-E-R-E, and it's all about which vacation spots are out this season. Loving that. Thank you. I'm going to do a segment called Toxic People in the Trash for me now, Uh and it's about relationships. Okay. Oh, man. Are you in some way implying that that's Griffin and I? No, 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 uh, not in any way. You guys are bringing some incredible stuff. Woo. Exfoliation, uh, uh, the vacation stuff, I love it. What not to wear, please. Sometimes when I pick up food from a restaurant, I ask for a drink. About okay, wait, let's run it back to the beginning of the question. because we might. <laughs> I, w- I work for it. Th- okay, but that is actually applicable to me often when I get <laughs> 
Sometimes when I pick up food from a restaurant, I ask for a drink. About half the time, they just give me a drink. But sometimes they ask for payment. <laughs> and then I'm forced to pay for the drink because I'm not going to tell them I don't want it now. <laughs> That's true. They very fucking got you right where they want you. Thirsty. Brothers, how can I get a free drink from these restaurants or decline the drink after the fact? And that's can't. from no such thing as a free drink. You, you can't. can't. This is so this is so fucking wild. This is such a wild, like fast food hacks. Keep an empty cup from every fast food restaurant in your car so you go in for free refills level of you asking us how to fucking cheat. The Burger King, how to personally cheat and bamboozle the Burger uh, Man. Okay, counterpoint though, I get it, because like you walk in, you're like, oh, long day, huh? We're both in the food service industry. Whoo, yeah, just picking up another order for those bags of bones who can't come in and get it. Am I right? Anyways, sure. I'd love a Mr. Pibb. Yes. But it's but if that's the sort of spectrum we're going off of, when I worked at TCBY. I never walked into the Baskin Robbins down the street and said, uh -huh. like, oof, ice cream days. Tell me about it. These hot times. Oh, when the hot times are here, ice cream days are getting rough. Right, fam? Anyway, Sprite for free, please. <laughs> but what if you had and it worked? That's what I'm saying. Is this question asker, there's already some proven proof in the pudding here that they have received free drink. They're not asking, can I go do this? Half the time, this works. But right? it, so that what I, that, here's what I would here's yes, what I would go do. Ahead. When the person when you're like, "Oh, can I grab a drink while I'm here?" and they're like, "Yeah, for money." You say, "Oh, no monies," and pull your pockets out and they're empty. And if you can, have Ooh, a moth in there. Moth in there. That's that good. will sell them like, "Oh, no monies." And then you might still get the free drink, but at the very least it's like I used I delivered for, let's say, a, a sandwich chain known for their rapid deliveries. And a lot of the times, the people would tip me cash, and I was so thankful because I needed that money to put gasoline into my car to get back to the sandwich chain that I worked at. <laughs> right. And so, like, it's not that far off. If someone was like, it's going to be two ninety nine for this large soda or whatever, and I was like, mm, no monies. Like, I'm probably not lying at that point in yeah. my life. And you did have that trained moth yeah. that you used for this exact scenario. Well, the moth would wet its beak, too. You know what I mean? It would get a little um, Mr. Pip in there as well. Yeah. I here's what I would uh uh here's what I would try. Um hey, uh I'm really really hey, I hate to bother you. Thanks for the food. I'm really, really thirsty. Uh-huh. Um, do you mind if I get a drink? And they're like, um, Ooh. that'll be a dollar. And you look at them dead in the eye and say, I just meant from the sink in the bathroom. I oh. was just gonna get one I was gonna make my hands into a cup and then drink from the sink in your bathroom. Oh, I was just gonna lap up that muddy, dirty puddle. <laughs> Outside, I, sorry. Yeah, no. Wow, I didn't know. I just meant the puddle water, <laughs> and then they'll feel so bad that they'll maybe just comp you. Hey, just don't do that on my watch. Have a cold, refreshing nickels worth of syrup and cardboard, uh, and and enjoy this 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 soda. Ooh, what about this undercutting? That okay? That'll be a buck fifty. And like, okay, how about this? How about I give you a dollar and we both shut the fuck up about it? <laughs> Okay. That's like a discount. Okay, yeah, that's like right, right. That's even worse now that I'm saying it out yeah. loud. Maybe, yeah, that's higher chance. That's, of getting that's based, fired. That's kind of sprite embezzlement if you think about if you think about it. Yeah, um, well, you could just about... turn around and resell it to another customer. Be like, oh shit, oh. really? Okay, hold on, wait. Anybody want a sprite? Normal price. I did taste it, so you know it's good. <laughs> Why don't I just say like, oh, I was hoping for an employee discount. And they're like, what? I'm like, I deliver food for you. I'm an employee. And then if they're like, no, you're not. It's like, okay. And then you take the food and you deliver it somewhere else and you never talk to that person again. Yeah, sorry, I got confused. <laughs> I thought I worked here. Because I'm tomorrow. here picking up food that I'm not going to eat. And I'm yeah. taking it to someone else who is going to eat it. And they I pay am, me. I am here more <laughs> often than you are. <laughs> Do you know who I am? Do you know who the fuck I am? <laughs> they say you have to pay for your drink. Just take the bag of food and upend it on the floor. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> take this job and shove your job. Please, uh, don't, how about I, please don't call my boss, which I don't. think is you. Or the app. Can you call an app? It would be, if they said try to charge you, 
just pull a sandwich bag out of your pocket and say, I don't actually need a cup. I don't know if you have a cheaper rate if you just fill up the soda bag for me and then I'll be on my way. So there's the, just fill up this soda bag. Uh, I have a Yahoo here. Mm-hmm. This one was yeah. sent in by uh, Daisy. Thank you, Daisy. It's a uh, Yahoo Answers user, Anthony J, who asks, You know such flavors? Huh. You know such flavors as chocolate cake and marble vanilla, strawberry lemon, and such, right? Yeah. Like cake, yeah. cake flavors. Cake flavor. I know such flavors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Would anybody be interested in a grape flavored cake? Huh. And I don't, the boys, the last thing I want to do is relitigate hot grapes, right? That is the last sort of predicament Obviously. I want to get into. Griffin, can I tell you something? Didn't yeah. Didn't even cross my mind until you said it. Okay. Well, was a, maybe maybe my bit recall is actually uh, better than I'm giving myself credit for. Uh, here, but but let's talk about this. Where's the grapes cakes? Well, here's the thing, Ditto. Yeah. Is that well, there's two different grape flavors, as is true with a, a lot of uh, a lot of fruit flavors. I would say we right. have the grapes that one might eat off a of vine, and then right. we have the grape flavor that one might get and say a pouch of Big League Chew. Right, mm, that doesn't yes. taste like that. They don't taste like each other. It's okay. purple. It's purple. It's, it's purple a different flavor. flavor. It's, it's purple. purple taste. It's purple flavor. Yeah, but, but I, if you taste that that weird like Big League Chew grape, you're like, that's grape. I know what this tastes like, and you'll eat a grape, and you're like, this tastes like grapes, right? But the right. twain do not meet. There's really not a good middle ground of both grapes, is there? No. And if you made a flavor that tasted like grape grapes, it would be weird as fuck. It'd be really good though, right? It would fresh. be good. Grapes is good though. Actually, Travis, local? I'm coming back around. I'm not I saying it would be bad. Grapes. Didn't say it'd be bad. Said it'd be but weird. But they don't. But they're not making cakes of this stuff. Yeah, they're making cakes of virtually every other flavor. Yeah. Right? right. I've had so many. I've had more lemon cakes than you could shake a freaking stick at. I don't but know. I've never I shake even a si- stick at a lot of cakes. And I've seen a lot of shows where they make. They're making stuff like this. Oh yeah. They but nobody's weird. A, I watched. I seen it on the Nailed It, on the Great British Bake Off, on the where's Zumbos. My, where, where's my Grape British Break Off? My Grape <laughs> British Break Off. Let me fuck my Grape British Bake Off. Where is, is it? Um, I <laughs> I want to take a second. I I went ahead and Googled it. Grape cake, right? I Googled grape cake, and the first result uh-huh. is is a, a Food Network offering uh, from uh, Chopped Judge Alex Guarnaschelli. Yeah. And here's what she has called this. Warm grape cake. Okay. And Alex, that's, don't tell me the temperature at which this cake will arrive to my guests. Right. Because I would say you probably have a, at best, 10 minute window of warm, right? Before you mm. hurdle past out of hot into cold. Now it just challenges us. Why does she say, Alex knows this, she's a foodie. Why would she call it warm grape cake? And I think it's cause Alec, Alex wrote the words grape cake at the top of the paper <laughs> and thought that looks fucking crazy. I can't call it grape cake. That's insane. It's, it's I also, absolutely can't do that. It's also entirely possible that Alex included. Well, you're at in some point in the recipe. So at some point you're gonna have to cook these grapes. And then she was like, I gotta warn people <laughs> about what they're getting into before <laughs> this is a sin against God. I gotta give them a heads up before they start mixing flour and what have you. He, okay, here's what I think it is, boys. Here's what I think it is. Wait, ho- wait, hold on. I wanna say something else. Okay. The second recipe is from Once Upon a Chef, and it is called Harvest Grape Cake. Fuck off! They need something Fuck in off. there, huh? Just c- you gotta get something in there because yeah. it just, okay, Martha Stewart is the third result, and hers is called a winemaker's grape cake. Just, mm. just have some strength that you're Let it stand on its own merits. Okay, to be, are- okay, to be fair, Justin, right? Someone walks up to you and they're somehow balancing three trays, right? And they say, this is a chocolate cake. And you think, ah, I know what that is. This is a strawberry cake. Yes, yes, I understand. And this is a grape cake. <laughs> it's the next result after that is from kitchen and it's called fresh grape cake. <laughs> Just- 
just, just, I'm having to go to the second page of Google now to see if there's somebody who had the power to just stand in their fucking truth. Uh, okay, fine dining lovers, soft white grape cake. So the cake is soft and white. It's weird how not every other fucking cake recipe has to say it's soft. Yeah, that's not white. a thing. Hey, how was the cake? Soft. Warm. Harvest. Uh, Winemakers. Ro- Rock Recipes has a sunken grape almond cake. Oh, boy. Come on. Ooh. That sounds bad. That sounds haunted. Here's the, Okay. Picture this, right? The cakes I described earlier. I hand you a strawberry cake. You cut into it. What color yeah. is it? Pink. Okay. I hand you a lemon cake. You cut into it. What color is it? Yellow. I hand you a grape cake. You cut into it. Is it purple? But but grapes aren't necessarily... Oh, shit, Trav. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. You better be prepared to stand next to your cake for each person that comes up, and they're like, "What's this?" And you have to tell them it's a grape cake. I know it's not purple, yeah, but it's not a purple cake. It's not purple flavor. It's not purple. It's great. This is a grape cake. Yeah, but shouldn't the bread be purple? No, grapes don't no. dye things purple. Like, cut open a grape, rub it on something. It doesn't make it purple. It's kind of clear on the inside, isn't it, Paul? Yeah. Hollywood? Coming over yeah. here talking smart about my grape cake. I don't think this flavor is going to be good in your cake. Well, Paul Hollywood, have you ever had a fucking grape cake? No, actually. Why aren't no. we making? Why aren't we making cakes out of these little guys? You win. <laughs> these little, these little nature's gushers. Yes. I love these things. <laughs> I love these guys. I eat them all the time. You're right. right? Well, I've never even made a cake with these guys, and I make lots of cakes. <laughs> This is weird. But then imagine Paul Hollywood uh-huh. gets on TV and they're like, so Paul, what are you making for us? And he has to say, grape cake. <laughs> Paul's <laughs> Paul's grape cake. <laughs> this is Paul. Is, so it's just grape cake, Paul? Um, I mean, uh, it's a Paul's Fresh Harvest Special cake <laughs> featuring also grapes. I bet that there was in history at least once that someone said grape cake and they said, did you say great cake? I hope so. I was like, no, grape cake? <laughs> oh, a thank great you. I just, I, I just bought it my, at the cape store. No, I didn't say great cape. What? <laughs> grape the great grape cake. cake? cake. Okay, just this call is, it Paul's grape cake. Just call it Paul's finest <laughs> grape cake on the market today. I work at a hardware store, specifically in the paint department. I worked here for four years, and I am a seasoned veteran, so I know my way around the color spectrum. I can make over 30,000 different colors. Jesus. Yeah, I mean, come on. How many colors do you two think you can make? How many can I make, or how many can Wait, I name? Wait, can I finish? Uh, yeah, can, fi- I finish yeah can I finish? Can I finish? Can I finish? <laughs> can I finish? Right. Who oh, was that? Funny. Who was that? Is that fucking Ross Perot? <laughs> that is Ross funny. Perot. Fuck, that's funny. <laughs> Fuck, that's funny. But today, a customer asked me a question I've never heard before. Which color is best? Who? Well, brothers, what is the best color? Who? And that's Trent from, okay, Cupid, Oklahoma City. Yeah. Okay. Did you get, oh, you got a little confused. It's okay, C. Yeah. It's okay, C. Oh, I know, I I know. Yeah, your brain got scared and confused of the truth. Blue. Blue? No, blue's a sad color. Green. Uh, we got to, we got to, okay. If we sit here and talk about our favorite colors. Not our favorite, best. Okay, but I'm talking about what we're currently doing, which is talking about our favorite colors. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be fun or entertaining. The yeah. bias has already, like, we've been at this for 0.0 seconds, and the bias has already fucking crept in and yeah. polluted the game. So yeah. let's take a step back and we'll take blue and green off the table for a minute until we can talk about it like scientists and adults. Okay, I, I will be a scientist then and I'll tell you. The answer is, unfortunately, in the context with which I imagine this question is being asked, which is like paint for either the inside or outside of a home or office or business of some sort, the answer's like eggshell or off-white or something, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, Because then it's like, hey, we're not going to make a choice with this color, but it's not going to be white either. Oh, we're not going with white. This is going to have a little but life you to are, it. you are, right? You, you are, though, right? What do you mean? You're saying, I just wanted to clarify that you're saying white's the best color. I'm not saying white. I'm saying off-white or eggshell. So, yeah, but those are white, so you're saying like, the best. Travis McElroy. No, I clarified. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Says I will. white is best. I said wow. in the context of paint for a room, 
inside or outside? It's, I don't have room for that in my tweet. <laughs> Listen, I love all this stuff. I think that's really going to help with the like the TMZ article and everything. But what about pale gray? How's that? We're getting close. All right. I'm going to take it in a different direction. With red, you can scare a bull. Yeah, so, but... Uh, imagine- but, but uh, bulls charging... Okay, Travis. Let's play in the fucking space for like a minute, scientifically, okay? okay? okay. Let's okay. let's hypothesize in the space. Bull is charging at you. What color okay. you want your little handy towel to be? I mean, red, but I, right? I don't think so the wait, customer's Griffin, asking, what color should I buy to paint my handy towel, Griffin? The color, the color, Griffin has said the bull is scared of red. So is what we're, is, is the way that bullfighting works is the city's <laughs> red and the bull has to be like, that's really fucking scary, but I'm not going to be cowed by this. I want to show that <laughs> not thing again. he's boss, even though I'm fucking terrified of this town. No. Yeah. You know, red was the color that every bull's gym coach wore is the mm-hmm. thing. And so the bull's like, I will not be bullied. That's where the term comes from. By yep. the color red again. Yeah. that's So I'm trying to think of like practicality, right? Yes. I think, um, what about this? Camouflage. No, that's a few colors, though, isn't it, Travis? Well, you say that, but I see those uh, videos on Facebook where people like dick, dip, yeah, dip a helmet. They don't dick a helmet. That'd be weird. They dip a helmet into water that has like camouflage paint sitting on top. Those of are, it. dude, th- and those videos are badass. Like we They're can so all cool. agree on that. But it's oh so God. far from being the way a, they like so, a... that and the ones where people dig out like a pool in a house and stuff, and they and just like live there. Whoa, I can watch that with the sound off for four days. What about the ones where they make cakes, but yeah. they're like clear jello cakes? Oh, yes. The ones where they slowly make stuff out of like colored pencils and, you know, it's like, oh, look, I'm going to recreate like a thing to sharpen pencils and I'm going to do it in like a thousand steps. I fucking love that, dude. That's a good color. I think so far, if we're doing it with an unbiased stance. Uh-huh. My red scares the bull argument is still sort of in the lead Uh because it's the one, it's the only color you're going to want if a bull's coming to get you. Okay. So unless anybody has something that can beat the red scares the bull. The red does scare the bull. Um, um, uh, what's a color that bees don't like? I was just thinking about bees, Trav. Yeah, you were thinking about bees? But I don't think they give a fuck about color, do they? Well, what if you painted your whole house to look like a big bee? That's multiple colors. I don't think if you paint. It's two. Yeah. Do you know that bees can see colors we can't? Oh, Oh, so it's probably, the answer is probably whatever color that bee is seeing. Bee Bees can see, bees can see UV. Good. Fucking tripping. 24-7. That makes me mad that there's a color I can't see. thank you. I'm glad they're gone. (laughs) Well, it's when you look at the color spectrum, right? And let's put on your let's do uh, sometimes, boys. I like to be a little bit nerdy and I like to really <laughs> geek it up. Uh, it's like just past like indigo, purple, ultraviolet, right? So, like, yeah. I just imagine it keeps going and then it's like ultra, ultraviolet. It gets purpler and purpler and purpler. Uh-huh. So, like, bees. They see all the cool colors that we can see, but they can see the dankest fucking purples that are so purple, like our brains yeah. can't even think about it. Uh, what if, hey, you guys, what if one day all the bees looked up and God had written in like ultraviolet in the middle of the air, everything's fucked. You guys need to get out of here. But yeah. we couldn't see yeah, it. And the bees did. And they're like, oh, we better go. Can I talk more about bees yeah. for one second? Yeah. I'd love that. Bees. Bees cannot distinguish red from black. So I think if bees could talk, the first thing bees would say is, you have got to explain checkers to me. What the (laughs) fuck are you guys doing? (laughs) Come on. You're just moving these tiny plates? I don't know, y'all, but it is wild. That's why we left. Because y'all were doing checkers so much. We were like, this is fucking nothing. Okay, so just to clarify, bees can see colors that we can't, but they also yes. can't see colors that we can? 
Yeah, maybe it's a trade-off. I hate that. It's but it's why we're so different, huh? It takes all yeah, kinds. Doesn't that's it? True. it takes a that's whole village to pollinate a flower. Everyone should be should have a bee paired with them. The bee will tell us about all the ultraviolet stuff we can't see, and we can be like, "Hey, let me explain to you uh, why like this can of Mountain Dew Red looks so cool." Yeah, I, it was. I'm gonna make a point about bees. All right, okay. everybody's pretty upset. Everybody that stand so back. Many of them. Let's Everybody's just let's just right. let's just real quick. It's red. It scares the bull away. And now let's okay, go. It's, now it's we can red, go. It's on red. It's settled. Yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I everybody's complaining about the bees leaving, and they're, they're upset about. Yeah. it. Yeah. And I get it, right? And it's because bee pollinate flower, right? Yeah. Bee fuck flower. Here's here's what I would say. If bees cared about us, uh-huh. they would probably just tell us how to do it, right? How to like pollinate if the, the flower? bees would tell us how to do the pollinating, we would do it. We could do it, and then they could leave. Like they yeah. could have told us before they left. Like, here's the secret: you give it a special little billy tickle, and then you slip the pollen. I'm guessing. I don't know. I well, don't the know. answer would probably be like, well, you rub your bits on it, and then you take That's your bits it. and you rub it over here on this other flower. Right. So there's a lot of bit dipping. They've been. They could have just taught ants, right? Like, what are ants doing? Well, Listen, they, they're, they're not flying, right? Justin. Listen up, ants. What? First things first, you got to get out of the ground. Sucks to live down there. What are you doing? It's dirty as hell. Second, I want to talk about having a wank in the garden. Because that's how we do things around here. You're bees now, ants. <laughs> no. I'm just saying bees could be ants. Well, bees yeah, obviously. Ants. Obviously. But without wings and the bees, like, you got to get up there and you got to rub your bits on that flower. Every time the ant gets out there, it's like... <sighs> All right, let's do this. And it's got to like climb up the flower stem and then it gets up there and it's like, well, I don't rub my bits on that. Or maybe it gets up there and somebody's already rubbing their bits on the flower. And it's, and it's a, I mean, also ants are just so strong, Juice. So when they get up there and they try to crank off, they're going to rip their members, dude. Yeah, dude. That's actually true. Yeah, dude. Hey, let's, let's take a break. Rip them this right up. Been... Punch a hole right through their thorax, dude. These ants are, these been... ants aren't going to be cranking. <laughs> <laughs> let's go let's go to the my zone huh uh yeah so we forgot to record the freaking ads man and i don't have an excuse for it if you're looking for excuses go somewhere the hell else um because we just forgot uh, we recorded like a bunch of bim bams. This no, you know what? This this ain't over the plate, is it? This one's pretty far off the plate. So uh, I'm just gonna do the ads real quick, and we'll pretend like this never happened. I mean, pretend like you heard the ads and act on them, because that makes us look like really good. But anyway, our first sponsor is Away. Away makes very good suitcases. We have an Away suitcase, and I recently purchased a second matching Away suitcase because I like it a lot. It's got lots of dope pockets. It's got these four 360 degree spinner wheels and a TSA approved combination lock, so don't even worry about that. Uh, and also there's a 100 day trial on everything Away makes and free shipping and returns on non-personalized items within the contiguous US, Europe, Canada, and Australia. They're sleek, they're stylish, they can take a, they can take a banging and keep on rolling. And I like them a lot, so there. Start your risk-free 100-day trial and shop the entire Away lineup of travel essentials, including their best-selling suitcases, at awaytravel.com slash mybrother. That's awaytravel.com slash mybrother to start your risk-free 100-day trial with Away. We are also sponsored by Warby Parker. Warby Parker, I know, scary name, right? It's got war right in there, but you don't need to be scared because it also has park in there, and parks are great. They have grass and birds and trees and stuff. Uh, Warby Parker doesn't deal in grass and trees. They deal in glasses. They do the home try-on program where they send you five pairs of glasses and you try them on for free for five days and there's no obligation to buy them. They ship for free and they include a prepaid return shipping label. Uh, you just go to warbyparker.com slash brother. You take a quiz and you order your free home try-on kit. They've also got new contact lenses, daily contact lenses. It's called Scout by Warby Parker. It's made from a, and this is in the copy, so I apologize, super moist material that resists drying for uh, lasting hydration and comfort. Order a trial pack that includes six days worth of contacts for only five bucks, and then receive five bucks off your next Warby Parker order. Learn more at warbyparker.com slash 
my brother. D- just do it. Warby Parker does does it right. They get you the glasses right. They start at 95 bucks and they include prescription lenses. And those lenses have anti-glare and anti-scratch coatings. It's good stuff. WarbyParker.com slash my brother. Hi, I am Lori Kilmartin. And I'm Jackie Cashin. Together, we host a podcast called The Jackie and Lori Show. Uh, we're both stand up comics. We recently met each other because women weren't allowed to work together on, uh, on the road or in gigs for a long, long time. And so our friendship has been unfolding on this podcast for a couple of years. Jackie constantly works the road. I write for Conan and then I work the road in between. We do a lot of stand up comedy. And so we celebrate stand up and yes. we also bitch about it. We keep it to an hour. We don't have any guests. We somehow find enough to co- talk about every single week. So find us. You can subscribe to The Jackie and Lori Show at Maximum Fun org or wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, bye. Oh, what? Okay. I want a munch. Squad. Squad. I want to munch. Squad. Right down the middle. I'm standing up. Whoa. Right down the middle. This is one that's usually here, and now it's here again. Munch Squad. This is a little late, so we may have missed this promotion, folks, but I'm sure plenty of you took advantage of it. Boston Market selling baby back rib bouquets for twenty nine ninety nine. 99 Holy shit. Yeah, I think we missed it. I don't think they're going to show that. I don't think they's... they're going to do it on Easter. Show that no, then they just sell crucifixes. It's two ribs. It's two and a cru- crucifix. Same Perfect price. Ribs. Same price. Still thirty dollars. It's all about the experience. It's experiential <laughs> eating at Boston Market. <laughs> hey, we're kind of taking kind of an avant garde approach to what it means to be Boston Market. <laughs> Boston Market is bidding farewell to flowers and shall to chocolates. This Valentine's Day with a new one of a kind gift, a romantic bouquet made of its newest menu offering, fall off the bone, baby back ribs. That term has never sounded good to me. I I, I need it to be on the bone at least until it reaches the mouth quadrant. Well, sir, and certainly if your plan is to deliver a bouquet of them to your lover, yes. you would want them to stick to maybe, maybe they're stick to your ribs, ribs with a pile of meat on their <laughs> floor and a bunch of bones. Hey, this Valentine's day, how about a dozen fall off the stem roses? <laughs> yeah. Right. It's, it's uh beautifully assembled with one dozen tender Boston market, baby back ribs. <sighs> The limited edition and sure to be coveted fucking pull up an imaginary <laughs> stool and then get a seat belt on your imaginary stool and strap yourself into it because this is about to blast you right out of the water. Are you ready for this? <laughs> the sure to be coveted Bay B A E B back ribs bouquet. Holy the shit, Bay. Fuck. Ah, be back ribs ah. okay will be available for purchase on friday february 14th in all barston market restaurants nationwide <laughs> while supplies last for 29.99 hey fuck it's one day so there are people other humans you know like us people on earth uh-huh. that had to spend their life minutes learning how to make a tasteful rib bouquet <sighs> for this fucking punchline of a promotion that lasts one day hey justin can i just dip in real quick for a second to touch on that thought because you when you say uh, be like beautifully arranged, tastefully arranged. The, the 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 idea to execution gap that exists there for me is insurmountable. I'm going to take okay. these dozen bones with meat and drippings on them, right, and arrange mm-hmm. them so that a human being would look upon them with their eye jellies and say, "Beautiful, well done, Beautiful. well arranged." These have certainly been touched more than the usual rib. <laughs> I'm crazy about them. And even more so that then another human being with their eye jellies would look at the new human being holding this and say, I wish I had that. 
And imagine, imagine the light in your lover's eyes and the shame in yours when you admit to them it costs $30 (laughs) for this fucking punchline. When we first toyed with the idea of adding baby back ribs to our menu. Wait, wait, wait. They don't even normally do baby back ribs? It's a newer offering. Uh, when we first toyed also, with the I idea, I love the of phrase adding, "toyed with the idea." Like, mm, how playful! Hey, guys, wouldn't it? Hey, I just want to f- put the tiger on the table and fucking just yell at it. Wouldn't it be what so about funny? Baby back ribs, <laughs> so cute and sweet. Oh my god, baby back ribs! menu. We knew we wanted to focus on flavor and quality. <laughs> says Chef Tony Fialho, director of culinary innovation at Boston Market. That's why we had to put him in a fucking crazy <laughs> shape. <laughs> Nothing says quality like pretending like baby back ribs are flowers to try to sell them. <laughs> Uh, That's why we're slow cooking our ribs to fall off the bone perfection again (laughs) before smothering them in Sweet Baby Ray's famous hickory barbecue sauce. We just launched baby back ribs a few weeks ago, and our guests are loving them. On their own, our baby back ribs are sure to delight barbecue enthusiasts everywhere. But when packaged in a delectable bouquet, Mm -hmm. they're the picture-perfect Valentine's Day gift to help anyone delight and feed that special someone. Yeah, that is the one of the things is you have to sit there and watch your lover consume the entire bouquet. That is it's part of the gift. Boston Market is also inviting guests to celebrate their bay <laughs> over a shared plate of baby back ribs, making it the perfect date night spot for some Valentine's Day loving. Oh my god, wait, what read that last sentence again, but slower <laughs> and deeper. Boston Market is inviting guests to celebrate their bay over a shared plate of baby back ribs, making it the perfect date night spot for some Valentine's Day loving. Yes, friends, Boston Market is encouraging you to fuck in the booth. <laughs> Come on in. Eat some cornbread and fuck in the booth. You know, never am I most ready for sexual intercourse than after consuming a bunch of ribs and bread. <laughs> in public. <laughs> in public. At a Boston market. For $30. <laughs> On February 14th, pork isn't the only pork at Boston market. It's a double entendre. Uh, on February 14th, couples can enjoy a romantic dinner for two. Mm-hmm. Featuring two half orders of ribs, two sides per person, and two pieces of cornbread for only $20, with a coupon available online at Boston Market. So you're telling me yeah, I can get a dozen ribs, plus extras, plus some bonuses, and then arrange them myself Mm -hmm. and save a 10 spot, is what you're telling me. Yeah, I don't know how much you're in the portion. 10. See, the half rack is like, it's got to be more ribs for 20, but they're, they're upcharging you. They're upcharge. Although, you know what? This is the $10 question. How do you arrange these ribs? They well, that's you. a great question, Griffin. I'm going to share with you an image. Oh, cool. Of what it looked like. Uh, and it is uh, troubling. And this is a promotional image. It should, uh, I'm sharing it in Slack now. Uh, it should be noted that this is not an image of like someone at home got this or this is what it looked like in sure. their perfect. I wish I'm going to need to tweet this one out because the way these ribs descend to the stem uh-huh. does not it make can't sense. Possibly it be can't possibly be anything. It also kind of looks for be. this promotional image like they took kind of like big hunks of like wet newspaper and dipped it in mm. like mud and chocolate and said mm. delicious this isn't this next part isn't germane to the story but it is they've thrown it in here boston market fans can also spread the love even further when enjoying the new baby back ribs or any of their other favorites thanks to the recently launched rotisserie rewards program <laughs> The loyalty program available via the new Boston Market mobile app for iOS and Android online at bostonmarket.com or in restaurant. Are you doing that intentionally? What? The, El- the <laughs> Ellen Barkin restaurant.com. <laughs> bostonmarket.com or in restaurant allows customers to earn one point for every dollar they spend in restaurant or online. C- can-, can you guys... Can you guys imagine what it would be like to order your food at Boston Market and then say, hold on a second. I'm a member of the Rotisserie Rewards program, 
And I want to make sure I'm credited the points for these ribs I'm buying. I'm not eating these ribs for my enjoyment. This is a right. this is work to me. I need you these You probably points. recognize me. I'm I'm part of the club. Um so anyway, Boston Market is making a truly delectable uh Valentine's Day mistake. I'm sorry we missed it. I'm sorry we couldn't get out there and uh warn people about it ahead of time, but Here's a quick Yahoo. And this one was sent in by Toasty Feet. Thanks, Toasty Feet. It's an anonymous Yahoo Answers user. Uh, I'm going to call him Blaze. Asks, <clears throat> Corn with a K, future Super Bowl halftime show? Oh, boy. Will Corn with a K ever be selected to do a Super Bowl halftime show? Huh. And then, uh, first response here three days ago, Conley39 says, it's, it's possible, but unlikely. <laughs> That's true of anyone being announced. They could say we're doing a live My Brother, My Brother and Me for the... It's possible. I Just side note, I'd rather see corn. Yeah, no fucking kidding, man. Corn, sh- corn rips ass, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah, wait, here's what I would say. Here's what I would say. If corn, if corn did the halftime show, here's how it would go. The first two or three minutes, you'd be laughing your fucking brains. It'd be so fucking hysterical that Corn was <laughs> was doing the halftime show. And then, like, five to seven minutes in, they'd probably do, like, a really obscure cover of some cool song. And I think by, I feel like by the, the middle of it, you'd be like, hey, this kind of rips ass. That's a little hey. bit weird. <laughs> Maybe I fucking <laughs> love this. Actually, this kind of fucking rules like this kind of rips ass doesn't it? hey wait did we all forget that maybe freak on a leash wasn't like a bad song huh. yeah, you can't, like this it's kind of fun to with your friends when you're all palling around and having a few laughs to be like but when he does it in the context of this song it actually kind of beats ass okay this is a real yahoo for adults grace sent it in it's anonymous yahoo answers user I'm going to call JJ asks, what would happen if I trolled a poker game in Las Vegas? Say that I'm in a Las Vegas strip casino and I go to the bar on the casino floor and order the largest beer they have. Then I walk over to the poker room where people are playing poker and I fling the beer out of the mug at the table. Then people are playing poker one moment and all of a sudden a tsunami of beer comes splashing down all over the table, the cards and the chips. Then I make a run for it, beelining for the nearest exit. And in some casinos, the nearest exit is not far away from the poker room. Lol. Uh-huh. What would come of that? I, okay. What? Can I just say, I love that this person asked the question, what would happen? And then describes what would happen. I well, throw it. And then I'd have to run away because I assume people would be chasing me because I'd be very much in trouble. Lots of people play poker. Lots of people play poker and it's Obviously. a pro sport. And a lot of people are playing poker these days. Um, but I feel like there's a lot of r- room left at the table, mm-hmm. the gambling, the gambling table where they play poker for advanced stratagems yes. like this like this one obviously this is this is like 90% of what poker is. people will tell you it's about like how you bet or how you play the card no it's about the showmanship you know it's like maybe maybe you've partnered with the beer throwing person oh this person's on a hot streak i got to ice him i'll signal to bobby to throw some natty light on the table Oh, no, what's that? And that's and that's. I mean, this person has obviously unlocked the door for us and ushered in a new era, and that's great. But I, th- I can think of like a hundred different ways we could just go ahead and bump it up. Like we can escalate it to the next level. Mm-hmm. So like you're playing, and you've got you know pocket rockets, baby, and you know the flush, the the flop comes out. It's like two, two, three, and you're like, fuck yeah, I got this all in. And the other person's like, I'm all in. And then, you know, they flop a four of a kind. And you're stuck there with your pocket rockets like a real dipshit. And then the poker champ, the poker um, umpire. Yeah. Devil, devil fish. The devil, the, well, the umpire, you're playing against devil fish. Yeah. And the poker umpire oh, is like. There. I just want to make sure he's in the middle. Yeah. yeah. Devil fish is there. And also Richard Kind is there. Richard Kind is there. He, he's having a fucking great, he's, he's losing a yeah. lot, but he's having yeah. the time of his fucking life. Yeah. I lose to Devilfish with my pocket rockets. And they're like, oops, ugh, sorry, Griffin. You lost with your pocket rockets. I think I should be like, ah. But like, I don't, but 
but like I'm not gonna give you my chips this time. Yeah, because the, the hands I had, the cards I had was the cards I had were really good, and the cards you had were really good also. But I'm gonna hold on to my chips this time, yeah. and like I don't think there's much you can do about it. Well, this is where the old double or nothing maneuver comes in. Oh, you nice. You lose, but then you just yell double or nothing. And no one really knows what that means, but if the person agrees and you win, then you don't have to give them anything, I think that's how, or you get double. I'm not really sure. Can I tell you what my go-to maneuver is? My go-to, because I, you know, I I play the rooms. You know what I mean? I'm out there. I'm on the felt. I'm kind of a felt jockey, you know? I'm playing the green felt. You'll flip, you'll flip. Flip the ponies. Yeah, I'll flip the ponies. You know what I mean? Like I'll I'll dig with the spades. You know what I mean? I'll I'll eat the clovers. I'll break some hearts. I'll cut some diamonds. You get it. Well, these are all card terms. These are what you'll people put, say. So you'll put some dice in your butt. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Griffin. Right? I'm a I'm a chipper. And if I I look at my cards, right? I've stuck in. I've I've called every bet, and then I realize I'm losing, and there's no way I could win. I pull a deck of cards out of my pocket and I start dealing them. Oh man. And I deal them out to everyone else, right? And now we're playing simultaneous hands of poker and maybe they've forgotten which cards are going with which game, you know? And, and I can just flip flop and that's where the term flop comes from. Uh, exchange my cards for other cards from my other hand. Yeah. And I win both hands now. There's a lot of silly stuff you could do at the table yeah. to get everything all scrambled and mixed around. Yeah. You know, you could also, a big fan, a big fan, guys. Big fan. Like, like no one's even <sighs> thought good. of a big fan yet. And you don't even need electricity. It could be like one of those like big just hand fans. Yeah. And you could blow you could blow the game away. Sometimes I also will just take my hand and all my chips and I'll put them up the front of my shirt and pretend like I'm pregnant. Yeah. Uh, or I'll like I'll dribble someone else's chips like behind their head. Um, yeah. And, and I'm like, oh, what's that? I've got extended arms. Do you ever palm a real chip uh -huh. and then raise one of the poker chips to your mouth and then <laughs> secretly eat the real chip oh, yeah. and just be like, get it? And that's what a is great this strategy. Yep, yep, you yep. could also just like when you're the short stack, you could just be like, I'm all in. And then you pick up all your chips and you throw them into another player's chip pile. And then you yep. point and you... say, hey, some of those are mine. And they don't know how many. Yeah. And I, here's the thing. If anybody gets too mad at you about any of these stunts, there's a new there's a new secret life hack I've been working on in my head. Okay. If anybody gets too mad at you about any of these stunts, here's a foolproof plan that'll get you out of almost any situation okay. once. You look at them and you get embarrassed and you say, I'm sorry, we're filming Encino Man too. Ooh. And then you point, see, there's the camera over there. And when they look at the camera, you run away. Uh-huh. That would work pretty much any time you've done something embarrassing. Unless. Because, like, of course, this cave man. I mean, I've barely laid the groundwork for it, but yeah, unless I guess, okay. unless I what? Imagine this, Justin. You do something embarrassing. You say, "I'm filming in Cedar Man too." Oh no, the person you're embarrassed in front of is Brendan Fraser, and he's like, "I know you're not filming in Cedar Man too because I get first look at in Cedar Man too. And no one showed me a script for hey, in Cedar Man too. Hey, trap! Or he's like, what? Or he's deeply wounded. Oh, <laughs> man. Wait a minute. Are you? You? Wow. Okay, ouch, this one hurts. I guarantee he got last or right refusal on that one. <laughs> right? <laughs> when they tried to book him originally, they did. We got Sean Aston, we got uh, the weasel, and now we need to get the phrase. And he was like, I'll do it on one condition for any future Encino mans, I get right of last refusal and last rights. I don't think poker players should get to think that there is that they're cool as okay. they are. I think poker players wear the upside down visors and sunglasses and they smoke big stogies and they have cool names like Devilfish and they drive big cool loud cars and um they they think they're so big and cool, right? Hey guys, you're <laughs> playing board games. Uh-huh. You're basically playing a board game. Like yeah. you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, but we have a whole show where we play Dungeons and Dragons, and I like to walk around with those sit-down visors and sunglasses inside and stuff. I'm just saying. Pauly Shore wants to make Encino Man 2. Oh. I found this story from 2014. He's in. Oh, okay. Wow. We got the weasel. Damn it. He's, the weasel wants to do probably it. probably so picky, too. Encino Man 2. Let's do it, he said. 
my agent and I are talking about. Sure. It. it looks like uh, the the writer, Sean Sheps, of the 1992 original, quote, already has an idea for the story, but hasn't written it yet. So that's a roadblock. <laughs> Do you think the idea for the story is there's a caveman of some sort and he's doing something in Encino? He's got kids and one of them is half caveman. He's given the kids caveman disease and he can't live with himself. Oh, I, I, oh. I'm sorry, Justin. If you remember correctly, at the end of the movie, there's also a cave woman who appears and she and caveman appear to be happy together. Maybe. Okay. Uh, he's in Cedar Man. Full caveman the baby. The first of the Geico cavemen. So, it sounds like we've got an idea for the story and haven't written it yet. <laughs> so one might say, <laughs> our little small corporation also is ready to make Encino Man 2. Yep. And is as close as Mr. Sheps. We've been talking Can about we- it. <laughs> Can we start the episode over and just make it? Kind of storyboarding Encino Man I too, guess, just uh, just really nailing these beats down. Now we know what episode five hundred is going to be. <laughs> sure, it's just going to be us perfecting our pitch for Encino Man too. Uh, thank you so much for listening to our podcast, my brother, my brother, and me. We hope you've enjoyed yourself, uh, and we hope that you uh, ha- are having a good day. Yeah, I that's don't know. Nice. We never say that, but I I feel that. I feel that. I hope you're having a good day. Um, I don't know when this episode is posting, so it's kind of hard for me to articulate much more than that, but uh, gosh, I hope it's a good one. I can do uh, big general announcements. Yeah. One, uh, tickets went on sale last week for uh, our new live show tour. Maybe they're sold out, but if they're not, you should go to macroy.family, click on tours, uh, and get tickets there. A bunch of shows, uh, some stuff in Norfolk, Virginia, uh, stuff at Foxwoods Casino. It's all there. There's a bunch of dates. Uh, go check that out. Also, uh, the Adventure Zone graphic novel, Three Pedals to the Metal, it's coming out in July. If you haven't pre-ordered it yet, what are you waiting for? It's going to be our best one yet, and I'm not just saying that to be cute. It's really good, and I'm really proud of it. You can go to theadventurezonecomic.com uh, and pre-order it now. Also, that check- helps us That helps us a lot. Everybody's so supportive of the book, and, and like when it comes out, people are always like... Uh, showing their support and showing that they they got it and shared it with their friends, but the the pre order stuff really does help us out in a in a major way. So think uh, about it if you haven't done it yet. And you can also, as always, go check out macroymerch dot com to see all of our fun merchandise stuff there. It's yep. great. Thank you to John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of the uh, theme song. It's a departure off the album, putting the days to bed. Um, and that one's that one's you know been there for us. That one's that one's right down the fucking middle. Like yep. that one's right across the plate, uh, and we are just so appreciative. Uh, Maximum Fun is also on the plate, and we love them. For uh, speaking it, of, so will you? Max Fun Drive is coming up, uh, yes. middle of March. We're gonna have a lot of cool. Can we say what our episode was? I feel like we should talk about it. Yeah, go for it, Griffin. You know what? I'm gonna make the call and say yes. I mean, we do crank calls. Well, yeah, we do crank calls. And it goes super good. Yeah, we're really, really good, good at prank calling. It's not, you may hear that and think, but these boys wouldn't be good at that. That'll be a rough listen. It's, y'all, it's a fun time. And You're we can say that. We say it's crank calls. Really, we're just having fun. And we're you'll, fun you'll like it. You'll like it too. And you uh, can get that if you are a donor, or you uh, can become a donor during the Max Fun Drive, or you can be an upgrading donor. All those things. Uh, middle of March, we're going to have a lot of fun bonus content, both for donors <laughs> only and a lot of stuff uh, like that's just going to come out on our YouTube and in our threat. And, you know, it's going to be great. We're going to have a great time. I haven't told you boys this yet, but I, I edited our Crank Call episode, and it did. we did it record... We recorded quite a bit, and it did end up being about 35 minutes long. <laughs> so that's, that's about the hit rate we were working with. Uh, but it's 35 minutes of pure good cranks, and how about a final Yahoo? Yes. This final Yahoo was sent in by uh, a bunch of folks, actually. Thank you, everybody. Another anonymous Yahoo Answers user who I'm going to call um, uh, Schneider asks, Why are chihuahuas... So expensive when they're so little, not really getting your money's worth. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Justin McElroy. I'm McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. It's been my brother, my brother, and me. Kiss your dad square on the lips.
MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.